Hi YouTube, my name is Brent Polite, and I was wondering, can I ask you a question? Are you new to photography and wondering why some of your pictures are coming out looking a little bit too dark or too bright? Or maybe you are noticing that there's a lot of blur on your subject's faces when you're instead trying to go for that sharp and crisp look. Well, if you experience any of what I've just mentioned, don't worry, you're not alone. I too struggle with these same exact issues. But what if I were to tell you that with just a few minutes, you can take your photos from looking like this to this? Would you be interested? Well, today, that is exactly what I'm here to help you achieve. But before I do, let's cue the intro. Now, one of the most common reasons why people give up on new things is because sometimes a new skill can be very intimidating at first. There could be so much to learn, and sometimes we don't even know where to get started. But just like anything else, by learning the key fundamentals of something, we are able to build a strong foundation that will propel us to become very successful and talented in the things that we do. So let me start off by introducing you to what I feel is the most important component in all of photography. You happen to know what that is? Is it poop? It's none other than the exposure triangle. Now you may be asking yourself, why do I need to bother around with all of these different settings and understanding this exposure triangle when I can just let the camera do all of the work for me? Duh. That's a good question. Now let me hit you with this. By shooting in automatic mode, you are essentially allowing your camera to tell you how your photos are going to look in the end. There are three elements One, two, three. that when mastered can take your photography skills to new levels. Level up. So as technology advances, the results seem to be improving very rapidly. But the one thing that can never be replaced or automated is a human element. Unless... There's no way for cameras to know exactly what we as humans want the final result of our photos to look like 100% of the time. What does that mean? If you are just starting out, you're more than likely shooting in what is referred to as automatic mode. This is where the camera that you are using decides what it thinks the best setting should be for your shot. So in order to take control over the decision-making process and have your photos coming out the way that you want them to, this is where that exposure triangle concept that I mentioned earlier comes into play. And once you are able to understand and implement it, you'll be ready to start out on a very addicting part of the photography improvement journey. So what are these three very important elements of this exposure triangle, you ask? Well, they are your camera's aperture, which controls how much your subject is in focus in relation to the foreground and background. In order to relate this to an everyday scenario, think of your camera's lens as you would the human eye. Do you know what happens to your pupils when they are exposed to a lot of light? Well, they tend to become very small because your eyes are trying to regulate the amount of light that enters into them. And if too much light hits your face, then you might squint to try to help you have an easier time seeing what it is that you're trying to see. So even though the aperture controls the focus, it does so through the camera lens opening. And the wider that this opening is, the lower that this aperture setting will be, which translates to the more light and the more creaminess effect you will have in your photos. Just note that with this creaminess, your subject will be less in focus the longer or shorter your distance becomes. Now hold on, Brent. What is this F business that I just saw? What the f Well, S simply stands for focal length, and it is the fraction portion of what your camera lens's focal length is divided by. So for example, if we have a 50 millimeter lens with an aperture of f2, then the lens opening is 25 millimeters wide because 50 divided by 2 is 25. Okay. So the next time you hear somebody talking about f-stops, 
you now know that they are referring to the aperture setting of a camera lens. And as you may have already guessed, the opposite applies here, where the higher the aperture setting is, the less light is introduced, and the more in focus and sharper your photos are. Makes sense, right? Well, what if you want that really creamy background, so the low f-stop, and the more light that is introduced into the lens, but because it is bright, you are starting to notice that your photos are coming out a little bit too overexposed. Now what do you do? Well, now it is time to introduce you to the next element of the exposure triangle, and that is the ISO, which controls how much artificial light is introduced into each shot. Because your picture is entirely too bright, you can simply lower your ISO, which stands for the International Organization for Standardization, which is actually pronounced ISO rather than ISO. Now before you ask, yes I do realize this actually does spell out IOS, however without going into why things are abbreviated the way that they are, this is what is referred to as a recursive acronym. And there are several of them out there, but this isn't what we came here to learn, so let's continue. Now breaking things down a little bit further, your ISO is actually your camera's sensor sensitivity. Now try saying that five times fast. Camera sensor sensitivity, camera sensitivity, blah, blah, blah. not even gonna do it. <laughs> now raising the setting adds artificial light into your photo and lowering it is just the opposite. This setting can go up to an ISO of 104,200 or higher down to an ISO of 50. Just be aware that there might be a consequence to this setting, which has to do with the amount of overall graininess that you might notice in your pictures. The higher the ISO, the more grain that you are introducing into your photos. Now don't get me wrong, there's nothing necessarily wrong or bad with grain if that's what you're going for. However, if you want to reduce the amount of grain that you do see, then make sure you lower this setting. Also, how much grain that may display at a given setting can vary from the different camera makes and models because some cameras do better than others in low light environments. And one more thing to note, that there are things that can be done in post-production with programs such as Lightroom and Photoshop that can give you a level of control over the grain through noise reduction. Okay, so let's do a quick recap before we add in the last element of the exposure triangle. You now have your subject in an environment of your choice and you've just set your aperture to your desired f-stop, so now you have that nice and creamy background look that you're going for. And you successfully made your exposure meter read a plus minus 0.0, .0 which is the overall goal of shooting in manual mode. But you're noticing that there's still a little bit too much grain than you're okay with. So what do you do now? This is where that last element of the exposure triangle can help. And are you getting any value out of this? Because if you'd like to receive more information on photography, videography, motion graphics, and all different types of gear and reviews, then make sure you click on the subscribe button below. And while you're there, make sure you also click on the bell icon so that you'll be notified whenever I release a new video. And if you have just one more second, It'd be really great if you can click on that thumbs up button so that YouTube will be more likely to share this video with others who might find interest in the same types of topics. Also, it helps me gauge what type of material I should be focused on as well as what you're most interested in seeing. So what have you got to lose? Go ahead. I'll wait. It's down there. Now that we're back to the main part of the video, we can now learn about the final element of the exposure triangle, and that is the shutter speed, which controls how much motion blur will exist within your photos. An important thing to remember here is that the faster or higher your shutter speed is, the darker your photos will be because the speed at which your camera sensor closes controls the amount of time that your camera sensor is exposed to the light. 
So your sensor might go as high as one over 8,000th of a second to as low as maybe 30 seconds or even lower. Just notice that the lower your shutter speed is, the more you're going to have to lessen your movement, your shake, and your sway when taking pictures. This is that setting where many pictures might be terribly blurry, but this is also that same setting that you can basically freeze fast moving objects in time by raising your shutter speed. But what you'll have to do is mess around with the other two settings in order to offset that darkness that is introduced. Now, if we went back to that scenario where you raised your ISO, but there was too much grain, simply lower your ISO, but also lower your shutter speed appropriately. Just play around with your shutter speed and understand how low you can set it before you have too much blur than you are comfortable with. And when you dial in these settings correctly, you'll be able to control exactly how your photos will come out. These three things work hand in hand or interdependently of one another. Now here I am using the Sony 24mm f1.4 G Master Prime lens. And because I want both my subject and my background to be in focus, I am deciding to raise my aperture setting to f16. This is actually the highest aperture setting that this specific lens can achieve. Now notice how my overall picture immediately becomes darker every time that I raise my aperture setting. Because these settings work interdependently of one another, I can use the other two settings to offset this darkness. Now in this instance, where I decided to set my aperture to f5, I currently have a properly exposed sky. But because I want to add light to my subject, I am deciding to raise my ISO to see how it behaves in this scenario. And wow, I am able to add quite a large amount of light to my shot to the point to where it becomes quite overexposed. And because I know that this is artificial light, I realize that I must be careful not to set the setting too high or I might introduce more grain than I want to have. If I took my aperture back up to F16, let's see how the other setting the shutter speed will have if we lowered it. Right now it is set to 1 320th of a second and I am lowering it to 1 8th of a second. And again, I am able to add enough light to make my photo become quite overexposed. And again, I must be careful not to set the setting too low because it can cause my subject or other things in the photo to become blurry. So in a nutshell, that is the exposure triangle. And by applying this knowledge, you'll be able to lessen the amount of time it takes you to shoot your photos in manual mode. Now, of course, this is going to be a learning curve at first. I still remember going out there, being really nervous and trying to take photos of people and trying to hurry up and get my shot before the moment disappeared. Also remember saying time and time again, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm dialing my settings, I'm almost there. But as time progressed, Things did get easier, I did get faster, and I did notice improvements in my photos. I also know that you don't always have the time that you need to dial in your settings in manual mode. And in that case, it's perfectly fine to shoot in automatic mode to make sure that you are able to capture what you're trying to get. But if time does permit, then I strongly encourage you to keep trying to shoot in manual mode and things will become faster they will become easier, and I promise you that you will start to notice really great improvements in your photography. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my very best to respond to all of them. Also, let me know what types of things you'd like me to cover so that I know where to shift my focus. I wanna create videos that provide you with the value that you are looking to benefit from. So until I see you next time in my next video, I want you to go out there, be creative, and realize that the only thing that can prevent your success from happening are the limitations that you place upon yourself. So take care of yourselves and be safe.